Hi, uh, and welcome to a very overdue uh, demo kind of tutorial video about the um, Lo-Fi Very Speed CV Looper. Uh, this model is kind of like the culmination of um, three years of tinkering and messing around with these uh, base model um, tape decks. Uh, a long time ago at a tape loop workshop, my first one, um, I took a load of these and I found a really nice way to speed mod them. Uh, and over time, and playing with tape loops, you know, I realised there's so many problems uh, with trying to actually use tape loops um, with other equipment. Um, one of the main ones was that it was almost inevitable whenever you uh, did a recording, say, to a tape loop, that uh, because the tape passes in a raise head, and then there's a gap before the record head, in these cheap tape decks, you've got a dual purpose record or playback, so it'll only do one at a time. But imagine we're recording, uh, the tape will come past your raise head, um, and then before it can be recorded to it again, you will end up with a gap in your loop. Now that's cool, you know, um, you need a background or silence uh, to be able, you know, like the whole yin and yang of things, but uh, sometimes you just might want to make a seamless loop. So um, that was something I always had in the back of my mind. Uh, other things I wanted to be able to CD control it, you know, so I could use my modular system to control uh, the tape deck. Um, and also I wanted to make it safe to work on. Uh, the original unit had 230 volts coming in here, so um, doing any mods inside there with it like that isn't just an absolute no-no. So um, I've modified it to have a very safe 6 volt uh uh, center positive input um yeah and there's a few other things um i've added a mod that changes the automatic gain control uh, these are kind of set up for almost like dictaphones you know for voice recordings and there's um, some dynamic stuff going on inside where it will um compress the louder sounds and kind of raise the sort of the quieter ones to flatten it all out uh, and I found by modding that and messing around with it I could get some really interesting tones out of it um, as well as that I've added a load of um, extra outputs um, one's a mix and another one is a or I call it an odd out um, it's a DC um, sorry AC coupled output the standard output on these has a bit of an offset um, most equipment that's not a problem, but I've just added that in case um, you do find it is a problem. You know, you're trying to amplify a line level signal, for example, up to Euro, uh, and then you'll want to use that output. But anyway, um, enough talking about the kind of overview of the um, of it. I'll get into you know what happens if you did buy one. What would arrive? So you'd get this tape, lovely tape deck, handmade here in Bristol by myself, and. Uh, power supply, 6 volt sensor positive, as I said earlier, and you also get a microphone. It's got one built into it, but um, we can, excuse me, always well, sounds like reverb at the moment, I haven't got a very good mic stand, um, but that'll plug in so we can record uh, straight into it, uh, you know, using a microphone rather than just the onboard mic. So that's just a little bit of an overview. Um, other things, I guess, as an overview, I should maybe mention before I jump into the nitty gritty. Um, what have I done to this? So, when they started, um, I'll find maybe a photo or overlay it in this video just to show you what they look like when they come. But they're very, very different. Uh, we have um, to, well, I have to remove this whole section, I put in a whole new faceplate, remount a lot of stuff, as well as the uh, power supply. Uh, I'm putting in a circuit um, to do the CV control and it's actually a PWM circuit um, and yeah doing some mods to the automatic gain control but the main mod and this refers to kind of what I was saying earlier about let me just see where this is yeah you can see that on there um, is removing the old permanent magnetic head and adding a proper AC bias array circuit to this. Uh, what that means is also if we erase the tape, it's going to um, take it back to being closer to kind of like virgin tape rather than just adding a big DC offset 
and um, to wipe the uh, to wipe any you know audio off the tape. So it's a much better way of erasing a cleaner way, um, and also it meant that I was able to make erase momentary using this red button. So if we have a bit of audio, um, it pains me I won't do it with that one. But let's just find any old. Um, Bit of nonsense that I've got on the side. Okay, so here's a tape loop um, I've recorded ages ago. And now we're just going to punch in some gaps. So you can hear that um, it's quite immediate, the um, arrays, when uh, we're at full speed. Obviously, if you're at slower speed, even though it's combined, uh, now to have the arrays head, you can see it just there on the left of the main jewel head. Um, at slower speeds, there's still a little bit of a gap, but um, this is the best I can do. Uh, I have looked at some other types of heads, but they're just not available, and they were getting to prices of near £100, you know, like yeah for getting just a couple so i can't really um justify putting them in here but and then we could just erase this loop completely now you'll always get not always but let's see, see there just a little something and that'll be on our splice it might be that the other way around <laughs> So yeah, you can see them. we can manually erase whenever we want to. Now, as well as being able to manually erase, um, the whole idea of this kind of machine is to be able to do things manually. You know, on an old traditional tape deck, for example, if you wanted to record, you'd have to stop the machine and then press, uh, press both of these together. Now, what I've done, the first mod that I did to the tape decks when I was working with them like three years ago at the tape loop workshop was adding uh, this, what I call a dub record mod, and that's a mechanical mod to make this possible so that if we're playing, we can now just press record and jump straight to record mode. So I'm going to pop the mic in. And then, no idea at all. Context. No idea at all. Can't really put them in a context. At all. Yeah. So you can see um, with our loop um, and not erasing, we can just keep adding to it. I mean, if we go again, I'm just going to add some kind of texture and grit to that now. So, um, yeah, in effect, this makes it a sound on sound kind of machine. We can uh, just keep layering up sounds until the point where the uh, the tape is saturated, uh, which sounds fantastic in itself. Um, and then when we've got to that point, let's just maybe if I uh, find just bang it to record some more bits into it, just to show you this principle of kind of like overloading the tape. And when you get to this kind of point where you've, yeah, saturated the tape, you'll find it, it doesn't take so much, you know. Um, you can do the sound on sound by starting quietly and then building up, and that way uh, your subsequent recordings are going to take better. Um, but yeah, the, you know, this dub record makes it possible to manually record whenever we want to. And when we combine this with the erase button, which I've, uh, manual erase, I've put it next to it, What's possible now is I could erase and put a new section in. I'll say that again. I can erase and 
record at the same time. To put, say, a new segment of sound into this rather strange composition, into this strange composition, into this strange composition, into this strange composition, Yeah, um, so what other manual controls have I added? Um, well, I wanted to be able to add the ability to, um, you know, CV control it. So, you know, um, and manually change the speeds. So we've got a really, really smooth um, uh, speed control. And the other thing I wanted to add control over was the levels. So I'm going to do that um, a bit more uh, in depth in some other videos, but I just thought this would be a quick way of introducing kind of the piece of equipment, um, kind of the ideas behind it, you know, and um, what I'm trying to achieve with it. And uh, hopefully this enables other people to make their own tape loops uh, in a way that they weren't able to before. Because I know for myself, I, I just got kind of frustrated with always having these gaps. I was having to record maybe to a whole piece of tape scrub through with my um, IEC tape head module, find the position, because um, unlike a big reel-to-reel, -reel, you don't have a splicing block. So yeah, I'd find the position and then cut it out. And that'll give you a really good loop. But this way, um, we can make a make a loop that is seamless. So um, I'm just to find, finish off, I'm going to... Strange composition. Erase the tape completely. And I would like to just try and add maybe some ambience to it. So uh, I think somewhere in this room, if you give me two seconds, I've got a Tibetan singing bowl. Right, here we go. Get rid of that nonsense. Uh, chuck this in here. And all I'm going to do is hit it a few times and take uh, a bit of a recording. And we're going to... And now we've got a recording, we could detune and start layering up new sounds on top of it. And this kind of reminds me of um, that whole Delia Derbyshire style of, um, you might have seen the vid last video I did, playing with tune teacups. Uh, the inspiration behind that was um, Delia was known for making melodies from um, wine bottles at various stages of um, drunkness, uh, depending on how much was left. So in the same way, we can kind of replicate that by changing the speed of the tape just to take any tone and then create a different pitch from it. So if I record up high, when we play back, it will become a low note relative to everything else on the tape. And uh, I wish I had the, it might work with this, we'll try, I doubt it, let's see. Um, and on top of all that percussion, let me just try this off the cuff, see if it works. Uh, let's see if we can <laughs> use this screwdriver to get the um, singing bowl resonating. Okay, it sounds like it's going. And then I'm going to try and re record that in now as well. That's going to be quite hard. <laughs>
And so this is without any delay or reverb. Um, obviously, you'd want to add some effects afterwards. Uh, this machine's designed specifically for making the loops. And then um, I'll be bringing out uh, other machines later on which have um, uh, delays built in. I'll probably be going with a PT239 um, just because it's something I've messed around with before. Uh, maybe later on a DSP. But lo-fi and gritty, uh, that's all what it's about. And I like the idea of having this kind of like pseudo tape delay, you know, by just having one playback head and then adding a delay after it, uh, we could turn any cheap very speed um, unit into what sounds like a more kind of comprehensive um, multi-head delay unit. So yeah, I hope that's been interesting and um, explained a little bit about this. I'll be doing a video with more specifics on uh, like a tutorial on different ways of using it, the inputs, the outputs, uh maybe anything else that i've left out of this um leave in the comments and that will help guide me to towards what everybody would like to know but um yeah as a um, one hit attempt at doing this i hope um i've explained a few things anyway peace love and patching bye now